Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 I'm going to show you this video twice. Did you see how long this video is and you still clicked it and now I'm rambling through an intro? It's so long this doesn't even matter at this point. But this is the LDARC 200 GT and I have installed a Runcam TX200U into it. So I'm going to show you the final results here real quick in case you haven't seen that video. Basically though I have the Runcam TX installed and it's mounted on top here. I have installed a XM Plus, it's the same XM Plus I used in the review on the bottom. It fits very nicely underneath there and it's all ready to go. The reason I'm redoing this first intro is Darren Mags on Facebook has been chatting with me and he drew up a really nice diagram on how exactly you're supposed to get this connected. I want to just show you this and thank Darren for creating that because this makes it really easy to see how to get things connected. And then in the upper right hand corner, I've added the two lines that you have to use in the command prompt in order to switch the controls from the lead strip to actually working with the VTX. So you wire it up like this, run those commands, and you're done. So there's the quick and easy version. You can watch this and be done or you can watch the next 40 minutes of video because that's what it is at this point. But it's fun, I mean, if people watch me live stream about nothing for an hour, I, I suppose this should be better than that, right? Maybe, I don't know, you can, you can decide. So go ahead and wire it up or watch the rest of the video. It's interesting, there's some talk about how to get things connected and I show all the wires and talk about how I've connected different things and why this works the way it is. If you've not done this before, I talk about what it does and how some of it works. So you may find that interesting or just do this and be done. So if you found this video useful, leave a like and a comment down below and let me know that you're done. And if you didn't find this useful, keep watching because I will show you everything I possibly can in order to make this work. And it is well, well worth it. I love this combination. My tester just showed up, so very soon I will be doing a review of just the VTX itself to see exactly what's happening with this power. There's a lot of debate on that, so I'm kind of interested to see. So we'll see you at the end. Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 we're going to take the amazing LDARC 200 GT that flew for 18 minutes. Sure it was just in a really boring hover and no one would ever do that, but it was 18 minutes. I love this thing, I love flying this thing, I love how long it will fly. There are just a couple little things I didn't really care for. One of them is this. The VTX. I don't like this VTX, especially since you can't really see the codes, you can't see the light to know what channel you're on, you don't really know what's going on. It's also only good for 100 milliwatts, which honestly is fine, but normally I would say you're not going to go out very far anyway, so that's fine, except when you can fly for 18 minutes, you can't really fly for 18 minutes, but you can fly for a long, long time. This might actually make a good long range quad, as weird as that sounds. It's not something I would ever expect for that, but the flight time is humongous. So I want a better VTX. I need 200 milliwatts. Here's the problem. This flight controller has no extra UARTs. We have nothing. I wanted to take a Runcam TX200U. Have you heard of the U? This is a TX200, which is great, and it adds telemetry options so you can control it from Betaflight, which is awesome. I also wanted to replace the XM Plus with an RXSR so I would have telemetry there. That way I have full Lua scripts and can control it all from my radio. It's my favorite combination. Unfortunately, I can't. At first I thought I wasn't gonna get either and I was very sad. And I posted on Facebook. Are you following me on Facebook? Facebook.com slash DroneRacer101. And then Sebastian Koss commented, have you already tried soft cereal? Use a lead strip pad or something else? And I said, of course I did. So here's what you can do. You can have either one of these options. You can pick, if you want telemetry and a really good receiver, you can install the RXSR and get telemetry with what I'm gonna do here. Or you can install a Runcam TX200U or the VTX with telemetry of your choice. Either one of these should work. Now I haven't done this yet, they're still in the box, but hopefully by the end of this we have something working. If not, this is going to be a really bad video. For me, I'm going to pick the Runcam because I've never used it before and I've never done this one. And I want to try it and the VTX needs upgraded. I'm not, I can't keep this VTX. So what we're going to do is take this apart. We're going to find all the pads, all the connections, everything that we need in order to get it hooked up figure out how to wire, figure out where to put everything, and we'll just get it done, and then we'll try it. And of course, in Drone Racer 101 style, I will show you every boring step, except this one. Step one, remove your props. Always remove your props. 
Okay, so I've just got some heat shrink on here on the receiver. So what I'm gonna do is actually swap the locations here. Right now I've got the receiver. If you watch my review of this, I've got the receiver on top. If you haven't, go watch that because this thing's awesome. Here's what the VTX looks like. It is a linear antenna still, which I, I kind of like this. This thing doesn't weigh anything. Just trust me, it doesn't weigh anything. I'm not gonna weigh it. But it won't fit. Well, will it? You know what it might? Yeah, no, this just doesn't fit down here. It just isn't gonna fit right. So it needs to go on top here, on top of the flight controller. Then you can mount and connect the antenna and have it hang up. And I'll take my FreeSky receiver here and move it to the bottom and move the antennas somewhere else. Step one is getting this off. I'll clip these off and get this receiver out of the way and figure out how we're gonna permanently wire everything before we put anything in place. So we'll clip this zip tie. I kind of like what they did here for holding this in place. I wonder if I can maintain that somehow. And then these LEDs, which are nice little LEDs, but they gotta go. We're actually gonna be disconnecting them. We'll lose them in this process, but I don't care. Okay, I take this back screws out to get this back bar out. I had to do the same thing here when I installed the receiver because this wire just didn't fit very well without taking it out. Make sure you don't lose anything in the process. So now we can disconnect the receiver wire. So with that, we'll just get the receiver totally out of the way. There are four screws that hold this top plate on. I'm just gonna take those out and take this whole top plate off and get it out of the way. Okay, let's see how that goes. Oh, that's nice. So now we can unplug the camera here. Get that totally out of the way for now. Get my double stick tape out of the way. I did two layers to hold the RX on, the receiver on. More zip ties to remove. So these are holding the battery leads in. They do use really good zip ties. King Kong, or LDARC, sorry. Loves their zip ties. There's two more. So here this bottom port is doing a couple things. One, it's going to the buzzer, and then it's also going to the board here. On their receiver, they are having it powered actually from a connection up here to the leads. So it's got battery voltage going to it. The ground and the video there are not going up, so we're just going to have to figure that out. Take these screws off so we can get this thing open and take a better look at it. So I found I couldn't just grab these nuts and twist them off. Uh, the screw on the bottom was twisting, partially because everything is soft mounted. So it's actually easier to hold on to them and get a uh, one and a half millimeter hex on the bottom. Okay, so I think these are going to be pressed together. Yeah, see those pins there? So when we put it back together, remind me, these have to be lined up perfectly because that is what passes the signal to the motors. So here on the bottom, we have the connections. So here's the VTX. This is also a five volt connection. So we'll be able to use this. We can add a wire for our new receiver. For now, we just kind of need to get this one off and out of the way. I said receiver, I mean VTX. So here on the board, we have a number of wires. We have power. This is the power in connection. So this is the one we're gonna wanna come up and connect to that to power this board. This green one is the telemetry port that we're gonna actually wire in to replace the LEDs. We have the video in, and then the red is actually voltage out. So you can use this to power your camera, which we don't wanna do in this case. If we did that, we would lose all of our OSD, and we don't wanna do that, that'd be terrible. We have four wires in this pin. We have ground, we have red is five volts, then we have a blue and a white. The white one is the one that controls the LEDs. That's the one we wanna work with. The blue one goes up to the buzzer. So the problem I have is there's only one red wire that actually powers both of these things. It runs to the LEDs and then runs up to the buzzer. So what I'm gonna to have to do is cut this red wire. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these others just to get this whole buzzer out of the way while I'm at it and we'll cover those in a minute. Okay, it's really late here. I just called this a buzzer. It's an LED, but it's late here. So I'm gonna be wrong on some things, but still, give me a break. So what I've gotta do is splice the red wire here because I don't wanna lose my buzzer. So I'm gonna just splice this two pieces together. To do that, I'll just strip a little off. I've 
We've got some really small heat shrink. I'll see if I can find a heat shrink kit. I've had this heat shrink forever, and I got a kit that came with all different sizes that I've used for many, many years. But I'll see if I can find one similar because it's really handy to have around just all the time. Just like here, just the perfect size for this teeny tiny little wire. I've said this before, I'll say it again. This is way easier when there's not a camera in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and tin these. I still have a very fine tip from one of my last projects on this, which will actually be good for this one. Hopefully I can tin these and just stick them together. I need like four hands right now. Here we go. There's that one. So before we move on, let's get the rest of the old VTX out. So to do that, just melt these wires off. There we go. Now the board's totally free. So for these, it looks like the battery wires are on the bottom and the VTX wires are on the top. So I'm gonna get this set in place so I can pull this off as soon as I get this to melt because I don't want it to get any hotter than I have to. I should use a bigger tip. Hopefully I can get it without having to change everything around because I'm gonna need this little tip later. That's the problem with these little tips is they can't put out enough heat to melt a big blob of solder. They're great for the little teeny tiny soldering I'm doing for everything else in this. There we go. So here's a little trick. I put a little blob of solder on the tip here. So that will help transfer the heat into the other blob of solder here that I'm trying to melt. Although I think I missed it. I did. The melted solder will help the rest of the melted solder heat up. Or There we go. Clean this up just a little bit. Also, what I don't want to do is melt the wires on the bottom here, but there was no danger of that in this case. So now, power wires will go through. Is there enough room for this antenna to go through there? Pull the board up a little bit, and you are out of there. All right. Okay, so for this one, I don't need the ground wire here, so I'm actually going to just go ahead and remove that just because I don't want it in my way. Now, to some of you, this may look really intimidating, and it's it, just take it one step at a time. Don't worry about the overall everything that you've got to do. Just figure out, okay, I have this wire, and I have this wire. I need to get them connected. Okay, that wire, just get it out of the way. Now, I have this white wire. Okay, well, it's a loose white wire. It's got to go somewhere, right? Where does it go? Well, this is the wire that we're trying to connect. This is the LED out right now. What we're gonna do is change this to a soft serial like a UART. We'll talk about soft serial in a little bit. So that connects to the telemetry port of our VTX, which is this green wire. So that's the next thing we need to connect. However, let's look at this for a little bit. We've well, gotta get some of this other stuff out of the way. This plug, that's obviously not gonna work. So we'll cut that off and get that ready to connect to wherever we're going to connect it to. Normally I'm a big proponent of using wire strippers, however when the wires are this small it just doesn't work. Okay, so there's the power for this. These will connect here on the back of the board on the ground and then the 5, that's 5 volts. Then this S is the video out which will be this one. So then we've got these other two black and red wires that uh, we don't use. Those are outputs. We had to look at the manual. I had to look at the manual to figure that out. So really, all of these can go. Now, depends on what you're doing here. What I'm going to do, I may want to use this for something else later. So I don't want to 
totally tear it apart. If you are going to be sure that this is the only thing that's ever going to go in, what you could do is cut this back all the way, put a little more, this is uh, electrical, liquid electrical tape, put a little more of that on it and be good to go. In this case, I'm not exactly sure what I might do with this in the future. We might use this again. So in this case, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is take just a little bit of heat shrink and stick it on the end there just so it flops over. That way all I have to do is cut that off in the future if I want to use it. You know what? Had I thought about it a minute ago, I probably would have left the plug on because that would have been safe enough. There you go. So now those are safe enough. Now the green wire I just stripped, they had already tinned the very tip of it, but we're not going to do that because we have to connect it to this white wire. So I stripped it a little more and I will tin all of these ends. And just in case, tinning basically means soaking it through with solder so that way the solder just has to connect to whatever you touch it to later. You don't have to soak it through at the same time when you're trying to make a connection. See now, through the smoke, that is all, see how it's shiny, it's all soaked through with solder. I do that by getting a blob of solder on my soldering iron and then I put that on the wire but you can see, I don't know if you can see that, it doesn't really soak in when you do that but then when you touch the new solder on top it soaks through the wire to get to the rest of the blob of solder and puts a nice layer of solder inside the wire. You end up wasting some solder but whatever, solder's cheap. Also while we're at it, this smoke you're seeing is not lead. This is leaded solder, but it is not lead the smoke. It is not toxic lead. It is the rosin core, which helps the solder stick to everything. It's not good for you, but I don't do this very often. So I don't worry about it. Maybe I'll regret that someday. So now that both of these are tin. I get them both heated just a little bit. They'll melt, and because I'm holding them together, they will melt and basically become one wire. You can do that with these little connections that don't pass any amps through them. It's just a signal. You would not want to do this this way with something like your battery connection that battery voltage and battery amperage are going through. For these little signal connections, it's fine. Okay, so now I plug the cable back in. This is upside down. Remember these pins, how they have to line up? We also need to get everything out of the way there. So now it's one of the trickier parts. We're going to get everything through here, lined up, clear the pin it's on the front here, get those lined up, get the screws on the sides here all lined up, get all the signals through here. That screw pushed through. There we go. And why won't you go through? There we go. It took me a couple tries to get everything all lined up so it wasn't catching, nothing's pinching, everything's on nice and smooth. So before I go any further, I think the next step will be to put the nuts on there. I want to make sure, yeah, so this VTX here can go on here now, except I want it this way so my uh, buttons and lights and everything's all visible, the antenna's facing that way. These wires will solder on here. Everything will be in reach. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and bolt this down. Right? No, not yet. I almost forgot about this thing. So I want the antennas hanging out the back, but I also want the port has to connect back here when I'm done. So that'll connect right there. So that will it reach up underneath in order to go there and then, I don't know, we'll just have to try it. So I'm gonna have to have enough room, take this back off to get that through there, probably through the middle just because that would be the most symmetrical. Slide this whole thing underneath. Will you fit through there? Please fit through there. Go antenna first. Come on. There we go. Like a glove. Ooh, look at that. It's weird. It's like this frame is made of extra circuit board. Nothing is connected to it anywhere. But it's weird. All, all of this is here, so it could be really handy 
for wiring and I don't, don't feel like it's taken advantage of at all. So now I can line that up there, have my receiver still visible, still accessible, still soldered on, and then these will be able to go through the top and connect up there somehow. But I'm wired through and my flight controller is still in place and it's all soft mounted. The important thing is now I can reattach my nuts. Okay, so these are soft mounted, so you want to go until there's just a little bit of thread through, but not all the way. You don't want to tighten it down until it's totally, totally stiff. Okay, we're almost there. So next, next I'm going to do a test fitting here, just to make sure. So if I said, I said I want to put that right there. No, with a camera angle, I have a little less room than I want, thought. So there we go. That's what it's going to look like. I need to go a little further toward the back because of the camera angle there. I can't go on the front. It gets in the way. So I just need to make sure I mount this all the way in the back. So that'll be fine. So now two of these pads are tinned, but very badly. Let's see if I melt that. I'm going to add a little, a little more solder there. There we go. Same deal here. And then this middle one does not have anything on it and it needs it. Okay, so now our VTX, those two are covered. Don't mess with those. Get the video signal first. It has the least wiggle room. So just put it over here. There's one. So my goal is always to have the wire touch. That is way too long. See that? See how long that red one is? That's way too long. Way, 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 way longer than I need it to be. So I'm going to actually cut like half of that off. Cut a little off the black one too. So as I was saying before, I was so in rudely interrupted by myself. My goal is to have the wire, the physical wire, touch the pad. I don't want it just stuck in the solder. I think that's just old, old, old habits. I don't know if it really matters. For some things it does. Some things it probably doesn't. But it's you want the wires contacting. You want the copper making contact. You don't want the solder to actually have to carry any electricity through it. It is conductive, but you really want it to just hold and meld the metal together. So there, I think I accomplished that. So here are the green wires going through. It's the signal. So there's that. So what I'm going to do next, before I get any further, is make sure it works. Then we'll finish assembling it. Now everything is wired in. Everything is plugged in. We can plug in, plug in the camera here, and now we'll go to beta flight. Finally, step one to make sure nothing shorts out and freaks out. Okay, so I've got my smoke stopper here ready to go, just in case. Got a battery. Um, it's a four cell at storage voltage. That all looks good so far. I like everything I'm seeing. So now we've got everything else set up. I've already flown this. It's on Betaflight uh, 3.2, so hopefully that's okay. So, so what we're gonna do first is go to configuration and probably down here on the right, we will have, oh, they moved it. Soft serial here on the left. So in 3.2, it's on the left. Uh, soft serial, I wanna enable that, save and reboot. So now we go in, let's check it and make sure that's saved because I've had times where that didn't save. There we go, that looks good. So now we want to go to the CLI and look up resource. So what we've got is LED strip. So we see we've got LED strip here on the left. We've got LED strip 1B06. So that's what we want to keep track of, B06. So what we want to do is remove that by typing in LED strip one none. You have to spell it properly.
There we go, it's freed. So now if we do resource again, it's B06. Don't, don't let me forget that. So now we have no LED strip. So now we do resource serial TX11. You see there's no 11 there, but 11 will be soft serial one. And it's B06. And then we do save. That will reboot. Now if we go to ports, soft serial, soft serial one, see that? So now what we do is we go to peripherals and set this to IRC tramp, save and reboot. So the first thing I do is a dump, which shows me all the configuration for the flight controller. So I will actually copy this out, save it in a notepad file, and then I run another command and that is the diff command. So this only shows me what is not the default configuration. And this is the one I really, really care about. I will also save this in a separate file or in the same file and separate them so I can tell where it is. And I wanna see everything that's part of the diff. So this is what I will reapply in just a little bit because we need to go and update to beta flight 3.3. Uh, the OSD integration has changed in Beta Flight 3.3. So what we've got to do here is choose the Omnibus F4 SD and go to 3.3.1. I loaded it and I'm going to show you this. Mine didn't work the first time. I did flash resources and for whatever reason it just kind of hung. And you can see I have COM3 up in the upper right hand side. I had to change that back to COM18. And then I went to uh, flash firmware again and then it just, just worked for me. I don't know what the deal was, but I had to go through that a couple times. So once that was done, then what I did was go back into the configuration and you can see my ports aren't there. There's nothing there at all. So I go back into the CLI and I paste my diff. So the pasting the diff will just show me and imply the changes that I have made and that also LDARC has made. So like the PIDs get copied over and you paste that in and then you hit enter and it will apply all of that configuration. Then you need to just save, it will reboot the flight controller and then you can go in and see everything's been reapplied. DSHOT is reconfigured, the ports were set up, all my configuration that I applied on the original video is all back in place so that is all ready to go. So it works, yes, success, it feels so nice. Now I wanna put it together and fly it because this is gonna be a great day for it. The trick I found is if I have the USB connected and it powered that way, and then I connect a battery, it doesn't didn't work. I don't know why it just didn't didn't work. Um, the power here doesn't power up the VTX, but maybe it was trying and it was stuck in a half little state. I don't know. But once I disconnected that and just connected the battery, it works great. It's awesome. So now I've got to put this mess back together, and it's been several days. I don't know where everything was. So let's try this here, get this out of the way. We don't need that anymore because everything works. All right, where are we? We've got all the screws. So I definitely want this facing up so I can see the lights because those lights still work and they're still very handy. They still show you what's going on. I've got my little two extra wires here that I have. I'll just, I'll just kind of dangle for the moment. I'm just gonna take a piece of double stick tape here. And for now, just kind of double stick tape this thing down. And we may have to move it later. This one I found a double layer of this tape works better. So I moved it as far back as I can on the stack. I think that'll be okay. Let's just do a loose fit here again. Get all the wires out of the way. There are a lot of wires here. So I'm gonna move it so the antenna is on the inside. So the antenna here is touching the frame. This is aluminum. I don't really want the antenna touching the frame. That'll screw up all the signal possibly. If this was plastic, I wouldn't care, but because it is aluminum, I'm gonna move it somehow so that's ma not making contact. Okay, I've gotten the VTX in place. I turned it so the antenna is actually facing toward the camera, and I turned the antenna to the left so it goes up and connects through the frame and rests against this metal bar and this metal brace right here. I kind of like that. I'll probably zip tie and heat shrink or something that here in just a little bit. So that's all in place. I went ahead and screwed the top back on, did it lined up, just be very slow, very careful, and that's pretty easy, straightforward process. My receiver is on the bottom and it lines up there. The XM Plus fits really, really nicely in there. I've got some double stick tape, so it's just some scotch tape here. 
Scotch brand double stick foam tape. I cut it so it fits here and then there's some little tiny holes here and I'm not quite comfortable that this is gonna stay in place. I don't, I honestly just don't think it will. I'm gonna try and put one of my zip ties through that hole and see if I can get it lined up. If you have taken out your receiver, you'll know exactly where it is, or I guess it was a VTX before. If you took out your VTX, you know exactly where these are. Hopefully I can put in one of these and get it through and it will work for me. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, there's absolutely no way, not, not a chance, no way you can get that through there at this point. You've gotta do this with the stack taken off. So I would recommend, well, hopefully you've watched this whole video before you go, take out the whole stack, get your receiver all installed in place, put this in place, zip tie it before you put the rest of the stack in because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I guess once the battery is on here, when this battery's on here, it's not gonna go anywhere, right? It'll stay there, so the battery will hold that in place. So I'm just not gonna worry about it for now. But I would recommend for you, if you're doing this again, because I'm not gonna take this away apart again at this point. Nope, not gonna happen. So for you though, zip tie this in place beforehand, just because it's a little better. It'll be fine with the battery on there. Yeah, it'll be fine. He convinces himself. So now I've got the antenna sticking up through here. I just stuck them up through the side. I am going to put a zip tie here on the battery. These holes here are really nice. These just provide some extra strain relief. So what happens is when you crash, the battery goes rips and flying off, potentially, possibly, maybe. We'll see how good this foam is. I probably should put some better foam on there so that doesn't happen. But the zip tie will provide stress relief for these cables and it will take the abuse instead of the solder joints, which is not what you want. There we go, so that's in place, so that'll help now. Now we've just got these hanging up here. You know what, I might put, and so I'm gonna put this bar back in, I think is the way I wanna do this, this spacer bar. So now what I'll do is I'll wrap the zip tie around this side arm. Uh, there's no knurling on this, so I don't think a zip tie won't hold to that at all and in fact i know it won't i tried it and it didn't work so i'm showing you this is take two there we go now we'll go back to heat shrink i normally make these all black but i'm actually running short on black just because of this very reason i think for this one i'm not going to use any heat shrink i'm just going to kind of wrap it around in the corner here so it's kind of just wedged in the corner to hold in place because this wire is not the antenna, it's just a signal. The antenna is actually in here. It's really small because it's 5.8 gigahertz. Now I don't wanna pinch it, but I wanna hold it in place. That's not the most attractive thing I've ever had, but I think it's gonna work. Okay, I'll put props on it, wait for daylight, and go fly. See what happens. Actually, I'm gonna heat, actually I'm gonna heat these first. What? Oh, are we are we done? Are we done? That's it. Okay, good. Whoo! Jeez, that took forever. But hey, it is well worth it. So, if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below, and let me know any what what do we do next to this? I want to try props. I'll tell you what I'm gonna try next. I'm gonna try props, and I'm gonna try the immersion VTX. No, the immersion. RF power meter on this because I want to see exactly what this does. I really like this combination. And if you actually sat through that, let me know. I'm, I'm curious to see if anybody finds that long of a video useful or should I just cut it into half that and maybe not use so much talking. So until next time, remember, this video may have to process for almost 24 hours, so it may not actually make it in the morning, but maybe sometime tomorrow, hopefully.